Thank you everybody for being here. I appreciate you choosing to attend this session and hopefully I'll be able to add some value today. Every time I'm in front of a project management audience, so I think about project management, I think back to my first encounter with project management. And that's about 16, 17 years ago. I think I'm about to like share my age now. <laughs> you know, or age myself, one or the other. And this is when I was at university. And sitting down there before the advent of smartphones and texting, I write a note on my notebook and I pass it to my friend. I said, what am I doing in this course? So it was a project management course. And we were the first <coughs> set of people to be doing project management. So they were, were guinea pigs, more or less, you know, to see those, what project management is about. So I was like, what's all this about? We're guinea pigs, you know, we laughed about it. A few years later, I'm a business analyst and I've been asked to do project management. So I run back to my books to pick up my books and do a refresher course on what project management is all about so I can get into it. And I start to see my notes. And I say, I'm a guinea pig and all the things I've said about project management. I said, oh my god, it's come full circle you know, to me. And now I'm a project, manager, um, project manager. And I definitely do enjoy project manager. I enjoy driving successful results. And I also am a change manager. I have a background as a management consultant and also as a leadership uh, development coach, trainer, and teacher. Before we get started, I want to ask us a few questions which we all should be able to answer. Why do projects fail? Give me some ideas. People don't want to change. People don't want to change like that. Why else do projects fail? Miscommunication. Sorry? Lack of planning. Lack of planning. Communication. Communication. Poor management of expectations. Which is Poor management of expectations. Lack of support. Lack of support. Vision. Unrealistic. <laughs> Unrealistic goals. Underfunded. Underfunded. Okay. Goals not well defined. Goals not well defined. Okay. One of the things that, can we also all agree on one of the things that I want to be able to drive home today, and all these are fantastic reasons why projects fail, you know, whether it's the, the change in vision. We start out the project and we say this is what we want to do, and halfway through the life the business owner says no. Anybody familiar with that? You know, new requirements, new sets of requirements, or we lose resources on our projects, or the money that was suddenly available is no longer available, or we suddenly need more money. So perhaps we can all agree that this is all around changes. So we experience changes in our projects, and that causes our projects to go a different direction, and we say, it's not my fault. There was change, I can't handle this, you know. So. Can we prevent change from happening is the question. Who thinks we can prevent change from happening? No. Really? No. We can't? No. Change is constant, right? Change will, ha will always happen. But as project managers, what can we do? We can minimize change. So we may not be able to prevent change, but we can definitely do various things to minimize change, like stakeholder analysis, and engagement, project planning, clearly defined requirements, and so many other things, so many tactical things that you here as project managers already know, and who might, um, the previous um, speaker even went into some of the details in terms of what the few things we can do. So we already know that PMI teaches us, you know, if you go to the PMBOK, it's all there. What I'm going to focus on today is leadership. I want to take a different slant to today. I want us to look at an easy breezy way to <laughs> prepare the project. <laughs> it's easy breezy, you know, things that you don't have to, you know, go in there and find the technical, the methodology and all of that, but it's easy breezy if you can embed it. So today is going to be how to lead and turn around projects before they fail. So we're going to look at leadership strategies and change management strategies. So I'm going to introduce you to be a little bit of change management. Like I mentioned, I'm a change management consultant. So I'm going to bring in some of that change management into how we can apply to project management specifically to help it. So these are going to be tools that help us achieve greater project success and turn around projects before they fail. 
There's some projects that are doomed to fail from the beginning. So let's forget that 1%. But, you know, 99% of the time, we may be able to help it. So how are we going to do that? So leadership as a tool. So I've taken this out of the 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership. Anybody familiar with John Maxwell? 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership. So that's all about how to lead. It's the 21, 21 Irrefutable things that you can do to lead. And one of the things I believe, and I've had that discussion with people, is that everything starts and falls on leadership. What happens when an organization is going AWOL or is tanking? What's the first thing they do? They change the Fire the boss. Sorry? Fire the boss. Fire the boss. <laughs> because everything starts and falls on leadership. So what I, mean, what I do, I do some mastermind group series, which is all about the like-minded people coming together to create one mind. This is, this, that's one of the things I do with some of John Maxwell's leadership books. So I've been able to bring some of that information and teach it here because I'm licensed to teach on these materials. We're going to look at the laws of influence, navigation, inner circle, and priorities. And I've chosen this one specifically as it relates to project management and how we can help. There's so many laws that I wish I had a whole day I'd go into it and it's so exciting and it's fun. But I had to look which ones would apply to us as project managers. What are those leadership skills? One of the things is, why is leadership important? We already spoke about that. The first thing that happens when things are not going right is the leadership team, they remove them. Our leadership ability is often what would define how successful we are or not at anything. It's, it's our leadership ability that defines our effectiveness. The higher our leadership ability, the higher our lead to be able to, to succeed at whatever it is we do. So that's why I'm bringing leadership to the forefront. And the lower our, leader, the lower our leadership capability, the lower our lead of effectiveness and successfulness. So I thought, that's why I said at the beginning, I want an easy breezy way. If we can become leaders individually, then our level of success in whatever we do as project manager becomes higher. Instinctively becomes higher. So when we talk about why leadership is important, because like I said, it de de determines our level of effectiveness. It increases our sphere of influence. So influence is something we'll talk about today. It enables us to manage and deal with change more effectively. All the changes that could come into our project or creep into our project and cause it to fail. And it enables us to stand out and it differentiates us from other project managers. It's that differentiator. How, why would you, we're all project managers. We all are familiar with the project management methodology. We all know how to put together a project schedule and a Gantt chart. So what's going to differentiate you from that other project manager? What's going to make you stand out? And that's leadership. The question is, do you want to be a manager or do you want to be a leader? Where do you want to go with your project management and the organization? So when we talk about leadership, Leadership, we've already said, starts off with self-leadership. If you cannot increase your level of effectiveness or increase your leadership lead or your leadership ability, that's where it ends. And from there, then you can start to look around leading around you. Yes, we do have to lead our managers. Yes, we do have to lead our leaders and our steering committee and our peers. So leadership goes also to leading our pairs. It goes to leading at the bottom and sideways. So leadership doesn't just center around having a team behind you. Leadership starts with you and revolves around you for you to be able to lead from the top, sideways, and the bottom, but always starting with you. So that's the foundation I want us to start with and why leadership is going to be key for us today in leading and turning around projects. The law of influence clearly states that the true measure of a leadership is influence, nothing more, nothing less. Influence. One of the things people think is charisma. If somebody is charismatic, then they're a leader. But if you turn it around, it's always the ability to influence. A good test of whether somebody will follow you or not is if they weren't being paid for that role. So imagine the pastors or the priests or people who lead voluntary organizations. 
or even politicians when they start out and they have to galvanize an audience. Nobody pays them, to, nobody pays the followers. But what do they have? Influence. So what's that differentiator that when your project is going AWOL or is going wrong, what is going to cause somebody to step out of their normal day-to-day -day job to help your project be successful? Because sometimes people do things because it's in their job step, because it's their performance review. But if they've done everything to fulfill that, and the project is going AWOL, and it requires that they be there for 12 hours instead of the eight hours which they're paid for, what's that differentiator that would make them stay? They want to. Why would they want to? You have to be motivated. Mm -hmm. It satisfies the need that they have. It satisfies the need they have. Well, if they don't like you and they want to they, see you. They, they believe in you. You know, so there's part of There's so many reasons. Some people might be thinking about their performance uh, appraisal because they have a personal <laughs> interest vested in it. Well, have you ever been on a project or had a leader mm -hmm. take yourself out as a project manager where you're on a project? or you're part of a group and things are going wrong and you have, if you've ever been on two, in one of them, because you like the leader so much, you're willing to go the extra mile. And the other one, because you're not keen on them, I'm using the word not keen, <laughs> you know, you just take a step back and say, I've done what I need to do today. And you step away. And that's the differentiator. You know, position, yes, we're project managers, yes, we're managers, yes, we're leaders, so that position will give us a platform, but it's the influence we have that will help, will take us to the next level. It's what will be the differentiator, whether people follow us or not. And if people are not following us, we're definitely not leading. Because you can't lead yourself, you know, you don't lead, you, you lead a group of people. Yes, you lead yourself, but within an organization, you need to lead people. So influence is that differentiator. Leadership is not title or position or power. Leadership is influence. There's this, there's the myth we have around leadership, the management myth, is that leading and managing are the same. So, you know, you have a management team and you automatically call them what? Leaders. You know, so we assume that they're in a manager, they're a leader. But people, when people start to follow your direction, if they're following you because of policies or procedures, then you're a great manager. Go ahead. Just like the last. I've seen in many organizations, we have a manager. But, you know, you have the story of uh, the guy who took all the mice. Uh, what do you call those? Uh, Piper. 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 Piper, yeah. Piper. And then the people are actually going maybe behind the same level as she. And the manager can say, well, it's not. Exactly. Because that person has influence. Yeah. Sometimes you can go into, you can be on a project and you find that everybody listens to that person. Have you ever been on a project, you're there talking that this is what we need to do and suddenly somebody who is just maybe a SME or maybe a developer or the business analyst says something and everybody just turns and follows their direction. Because that person has more influence within the uh, organization. So that's what influence is, where they follow who they believe in and who will take them to their destination. Um, there's another example of Tony Blair in England where people did not like his policies. They always complain about Tony Blair's policies, but guess what? He remained in office for three terms because they liked the leader. So there are times where people would just like that leader and just follow the leader. Wherever you take us, we go. <laughs> you know, and that's.